Hello, this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome to another Indie Game Friday, where each week I take a look at a different independent role-playing game. Now, I know, I know, I need to get away from the RPG light or barely RPG titles. But honestly, after the week I've had, I just needed something that I hoped would be quick and easy and amusing. So I went ahead and took a look at Age of Foray. Developed and published by Evil Burgers, it was released on Steam on August 18th, 2018. So is Age of Forays quick and easy and amusing? Well, it is quick. Age of Forays is a 2D pixel action brawler RPG in which you play the part of a northern raider named Odin, who manages a ship and a band of raiders and also goes out and loots and pillages. The RPG elements are weak but evident and even as limited as they are, they still manage to make up the large proportion of the gameplay simply from how simple the other parts of the game are. Wow, I used the word simple a lot there. I need to work on that. In terms of storyline, a quarter century prior, Earl Gutleaf united the northern tribes into a single kingdom. He ruled for a few decades of peace and prosperity, and then some warring warlords rose up to challenge him. They overthrew him and left only the king's son, Odin, to go ahead and journey forth from the land, beginning to raid other islands. You play the part of Odin, managing your ship and your raiders. The gameplay loop is relatively simple. You start aboard your ship, where you can pay various amounts of money or recovered bars of precious metal to either upgrade your abilities, your equipment, your ship, or your troops, and then you set forth to raid. Raiding takes place on a side-scrolling 2D map that functions very much like a beat-em-up game, and after each raid, you're just returned to your ship. Your character has a few stats and abilities. You have a level which raises as you gain experience fighting, gold and food that are earned during the beat-em-up stages, hit points that determine when you die, of course, damage that determines how much you can injure opponents during each attack, defense that defines how much you can block damage received, map pieces that are gained after killing certain guardians, bronze, silver, and gold bars that are obtained in a similar manner, how many easy, normal, and hard raids you have finished. You also get three jewelry slots that further modify your abilities. Aboard the ship, you have various NPCs to deal with. Ship improvements take gold, and they can be used to modify your sails that affects the resources used for each raid, Barrels that can affect how much food you can carry and boost the health of your warriors. Rostrum, which results in tougher, more damaging warriors. And Cabin, that governs how many troops you can actually hire or select from. The Jeweler accepts bars of precious metals, as aforementioned, to produce rings that boost your melee damage, a necklace that boosts your health, and an armlet that boosts your throwing axe damage. The Troops Manager takes gold and allows you to hire warriors or archers. The amount of each troop available at a given time depends on your cabin upgrade, as does how many you can have hired in total. An NPC can boost your character's base abilities in melee with their shield blocks and with their throwing axe for an outlay of gold. Finally, there is a navigator NPC that allows you to select between close, near, and far destinations to raid. This takes your food stores to execute and functions as a mission difficulty selector with close missions being easy, near missions being normal, and far destinations being hard. Once you have selected a destination type, you arrive on a 2D map with you and any troops you may have. You just move around the map with WASD keys, you can throw your axe with the E key, left click to swing your axe, and right click to block. Blocking is useful to deflect arrows and some close attacks, although you can only block a certain amount of attacks based on your shield skill before having to recover. Likewise, if you throw your axe, it takes a while to reset before you can throw it again. Fortunately, this doesn't actually affect your normal melee attacks. You do have to upgrade your throwing attack before you can even use that, though. You can also, if you have troops, direct them to move to your mouse cursor's location with the T key and just rush forward and attack anybody in their way with the G key. I found it useful to mix the two up because if you just let them charge ahead, it doesn't give you time to wander around doing things like smashing barrels, killing sheep or chickens, and the like. During the brawling sections, enemies, barrels, and random animals can drop various things. Animals tend to drop food, while barrels and enemies can drop food, gold, or healing potions. 
This is far from guaranteed, but it is the main means of getting upgrade material for your characters and crew, so it can be useful to linger in an area to do so. Enemies that you face and troops that you command tend to be one of two focused types, melee or archers, and both enemies and allies alike share basic attack patterns. Melee characters tend to rush up and swarm their opponents, while archers hang back and shoot, retreating as necessary. There are boss guardians that are much more powerful melee type characters that you can encounter at the end of a stage. Indeed, the end of a raid may have a few different styles of ending randomly selected, either a boss to defeat or a pile of plunder to defend for a set amount of time from oncoming enemies. Win or lose, though, you are sent back to the ship after the stage, where you can spend anything that you picked up to improve either yourself or your crew. After that, you simply rinse and repeat as long as you wish. In essence, the gameplay is, as I have stated over and over again, super simple. The upgrade mechanism does give some sort of RPG-style progression, honestly equal to any RPG light offering I've seen lately. But the game overall does give a feel of gathering a raiding band and just diving into combat, which is what the game was aiming for. It isn't much, but what it does, it does well. The management section takes a little bit of strategy. There is a balance that you have to follow if you want to properly advance without just getting your troops wiped out. And the combat is fair. There's a bit of clunkiness, but it doesn't really seem out of place considering the types of warriors that are involved. While none of the default controls felt too onerous to use, the simplified troop command did take some getting used to. Since you've directed your troops to move to a spot, they won't actually attack once they're there, even to defend themselves. And if you've ordered them to attack, they'll happily charge off to their deaths, unless you rein them in and keep them close. Graphically, the game uses a by now routine pixel art aesthetic, although it does it fairly well, with a cohesion of design and progressively fluid animations that make it pretty fun to play. The music is pretty good as well, although the choice of We Three Kings for the main management theme is a bit incongruous. So, is the game quick and easy? I'd say yes, although more easy to get into rather than easy in the sense that the combats are easy, because the challenge scales pretty well. Is it amusing? Well, I thought so, although I will have to admit that this is largely because of the relatively tight price tag. There are better RPG brawlers out there, and better Seaborn Raider RPGs out there, but for a solid little action game with RPG leanings at not a big price, it's not too bad. I'll have to stick this firmly in the it's okay if you like this sort of thing pile. I do have to say that Age of Forays is one of those games that I feel it could have been a little bit deeper, or in fact a lot more deep, with just a little bit of extra attention during development. But at the same time, I can respect a combat experience that gets the job done for the single type of highly focused play that is presented. I can only hope to see another offering from the same developer in the future. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. As always, the link will be in the description below. This has been the RPG Crawler with Indie Game Friday, Age of Forays. And as much fun as these excursions into the RPG light area are, I hope, I truly hope, that I'll be able to return to a more in-depth RPG next week. If you like what you've seen, remember to leave a like, comment if you've got any feedback, and subscribe for more RPG content, both tabletop and computer. If you're feeling particularly generous, I do have a Patreon at patreon.com slash rpgcrawler that goes towards supporting this channel. Until next time, take care and goodbye.